How's it going YouTube? Cody Bernardi here with another YouTube video. In today's video, I'm going to be doing an introduction to vulnerability management. Now, this is just going to be like a part one or a teaser of a complete series that I'm not sure where I'm going to upload yet. It might be onto YouTube, it might be onto Udemy or something like that, but this is just going to be an introduction to vulnerability management. So for those of you that do not know me, I work full-time in vulnerability management, part-time on a red team, and part-time on a computer computer protection team in the United States Army Reserve. So my bread and butter is threat intelligence and vulnerability management. What is vulnerability management? So vulnerability management in my own terms, a bunch of scanning, a bunch of audits, a bunch of writing of policy. Now it's obviously a little bit more in depth than that. So I will go over that uh, and I'll try to talk a little technical, but I'll probably leave that for a complete video series that I might upload to Udemy or something like that. So a vulnerability management team, a very beginner, like this team is just now spawned, it's become its own little thing. Typically the first thing a vulnerability management team will do is do a very basic discovery scan. Now a discovery scan is just, think of it as like an Nmap scan. You get an IP range or a few IP ranges, you scan them, you check for open ports, you check for services running on them, uh, and very basic unauthenticated checks, and you download that report, and you review it with your team, uh, and then you work on saying like, oh, well, we should probably remove this MySQL server that's out of date from the past four years off the internet, <clears throat> and then you kind of work your way down. Uh, so it really depends on what your threat model looks like and what the business priorities are. Then you get into something called authenticated scanning. Authenticated scanning, there's two kinds of authenticated scanning you can do. There is credential authenticated scanning and agent authenticated scanning. So a credential authenticated scan is kind of the, I guess, the normal way that vulnerability management has been doing things since it's ever been a thing. So I'm going to pause the video real quick right here. Uh, I made a quick diagram, well, actually two diagrams explaining the difference between credentialed scanning and agent scanning. So what we're looking at right here is credentialed scanning. So you have a scanner appliance in the private network and it's scanning all the devices within that private network. Uh, you see that we have a few workstations right here. And then we also have this random device over here. Let's say this is an ICS device. Uh, so the, the benefits of credentialed scanning is you can scan appliances like ICS and random devices that agents simply cannot be installed on. So that would include things like Cisco switches, routers, Juniper, you name it. Things that aren't necessarily workstations and you can't really install a little service to run in the background. Uh, but however, it's all private and there's really no communication going out into the internet. And let's say if this workstation was to leave the network, uh, this 192.168.0.3, and it was to go to a completely other network, uh, yeah, you can't scan it anymore. And then I got this other drawing over here that kind of brings it all in with the benefits of agent scanning. So we have the corporate network right here. We got a few workstations. I didn't bother putting IP addresses because it really doesn't matter. Uh, so it's running the agent that is local on the machine and it's egressing all of that data out via HTTPS through the internet to the scanning platform, which would be an AWS or Azure or whatever. Uh, but you also have uh, devices that are kind of fluid on the networks they go in. So it maybe comes into the corporate network. It still does the checks locally, egress via port or HTTPS through the internet to a centralized location like AWS. But if that laptop was to leave and go to like a private network, well, like we saw over here, this device can't connect to a home network because there's firewalls, there's tons of other things in there that I even talk about. Firewalls and bastions and all these things that would prevent a connection going into a device. It's much easier to go from a device to a central location. So we got all these private networks, they're communi communicating via HTTPS, normal internet traffic through the internet to a central scanning platform. And this central scanning platform is where you pull that vulnerability data in. You can review, okay, this device is bad, this device is bad. The downsides of agent scanning is it really doesn't, it only supports, you know, Windows, Mac, Ubuntu, and there's probably a few other operating systems, but you can't scan, you know, ICS and other critical infrastructure systems, but you know, there, there is a win because most of the stuff you're going to be scanning is going to probably be workstation. So on with the video.
It's basically you have a scanner on the network with credentials to a bunch of hosts and it goes and scans each device and logs into them basically and checks for patches, missing patches, software running on the system, very high level information or not I guess not high level but very detailed information about the system, you know, what BIOS or not BIOS, what what the bi- or uh, net BIOS name is, host name, IP address, the amount of RAM that system has, the hard drive capacity, you know, anything you could think of uh, this authenticated scan can do uh, and this scanner or scanners live on the network and it just scans everything. Now the downside to credentialed scanning is that the scanner has to have keys to the kingdom to every device practically on the network uh, or most devices on the network. And This is not ideal because well if someone gets into the network somehow or if you have a bad network, (coughs) bad actor in the company they can breach that device, get those credentials and now they are pretty much root on every machine in the network. Now the way uh, vulnerability management teams now scan is called an agent scan. An agent scan is basically a little piece of software installed on a machine. It does the same sort of checks that a uh, a credentialed scan would do and report it out to a cloud platform. And that's basically, it's just a little service that runs on the machine and it can run every hour or six hours or whatever. Uh, and reports it through the internet. Now, the benefits of this is, well, you don't have, I guess, credentials spread across the entire network. Uh, And then you can also scan these hosts that are kind of fluid on what network they are on. Because if you do credentialed scanning, uh, all the hosts have to be within that uh, network, that private network. And once they leave the network, so let's say you issue out laptops to your employees, once they leave the corporate network, you can no longer scan their uh, their laptops. Uh, so, But an agent scan runs it locally and then reports it through the internet and you could still uh, get vulnerability data on those machines. Uh, the second thing a vulnerability management team does is kind of software tracking. So software tracking is once you do your, you know, your scans, those can be pretty automated with a cron job. Uh, you, you, you then want to audit with your, uh, your software teams, basically what products, you know, are being deployed out to the customers and then any dependencies of those products. So let's say you have this lovely website, that's pretty gooey. There's obviously going to be some open source or closed source dependencies of that final product. And you want to make sure that those products are not vulnerable because you can very much undermine a <coughs> an entire product just because it's using a vulnerable dependency. Audits and checking, you know, software versions, make sure that, you know, these dependencies are not end of life uh, and keeping those up to date is another thing a vulnerability management team does. Uh, and then the last part is policy. You can do all these scans, you can enforce, you know, patching or mediation, but if you don't have policy in place that is everyone in the company must abide by it, you know, your patching compliance really doesn't matter unless you have that policy set stating these are the SLAs for patching. Now, a caveat to what vulnerability management teams uh, typically enforce is patching. Uh, depending on the company and <clears throat> the the risk that you're willing to take, uh, vulnerability management teams also work with these partner teams, these system teams, on exceptions and extensions on patching policy. Because if you have like a CVSS 10.0 and it's being exploited everywhere in the wild, but there's this one computer on the network that is completely air gapped, running you know that vulnerable piece of software that management can then sign off on the risk of that machine getting popped. Uh, Basically, the vulnerability management team will go to them saying, these are the risks, this is how easy it is, this is basically a whole technical explanation on why they need to patch. If that team says, we can't patch because this system needs 100% uptime, this patch requires a reboot, we need to do this during like a maintenance window, we like to extend uh, the SLA to this time, management signs off on it, everyone's happy, but that all has to be in policy, in writing, everyone agrees on it, no arguing of it. That is kind of the Bible of how things are done in a company. So that's it for this video. Um, Stay tuned, I might make a whole Udemy series on zero to hero and vulnerability management, how to start your own program at your own business. Um, so stay tuned for that. I'll have to find some time to do that. I might have to take a week off of work to get that done, but I will probably 
hopefully get that delivered sometime this year. And uh, I'll put a link down below once that's done and I'll make an announcement on my YouTube channel. But if you enjoy content like this, feel free to leave a thumbs up on the video, hit the subscribe button and share this with every single person that you know and any second level people that you might know on LinkedIn, share it with them. I greatly appreciate that. Um, and yeah, you all have a fine and dandy day. Thank you. Thank you.